I did think about you yesterday from this standpoint. I was there was Stephen A. addressed the fact that McAfee now reportedly is making a lot more than Stephen A. The Stephen A. salary is about like eight to twelve million. He says that's not true. That's what's out there. McAfee's seventeen million. He says that's not true. That's what's out there. Usually, if it's out there, it's true. But everyone says it. But they said fine. Must be in the ballpark. Must be in the ballpark. Do you ever think to yourself, the way media is now with these salaries? If peak Mike and the Mad Dog had happened now, what you guys would have... Because your guys' show would have ended up... There would have been a podcast. The video clips would be all over the internet. The, your TV deal with Yes would... Be, they'd make you do an hour on Yes that's exclusive, which you would have got... I mean, the way everything now is, the way they cite... You know, look at Stephen A. He's got 50 jobs that he's made. You guys did very well at FAN. I don't think... I'm not saying let's hold a telethon for Mad Dog. But... The money now seems so unbelievable compared to when you and Mike were at your peak. It's all about content. It's all about, you know, McAfee supplies great content. They bring more eyeballs to ESPN because of his machinery. But you and Mike would have done that. You Maybe. and Mike would. Uh, you know, uh, unless people would have looked at it as too New Yorkish. Oh, that's true. And that's maybe true. it wouldn't have translated across America. You know, McAfee is not really. We know he's from the Midwest, but he doesn't, he's not characterized as a Bostonite or New Yorker or right. uh, a, a Californian. You know, I mean, he's basically, you know, he's, he's neutral. And I think that helps from a national perspective. Mike and I were not neutral. So you wonder if the Mike and the Mad Dog in numbers, I'm not talking about the select New Yorkers who live in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm talking about numbers. When Mike and I had moved the needle to such a degree where somebody said, we got to have Mike and the Mad Dog on this channel somehow. I don't care what you're paying. We got to get him here. I don't know if that is accurate. Um, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I've been lucky, listen, especially this part of my life where normally I'd be winding it down. Yeah. Uh, so um, I don't get too crazy uh, about what the, uh, well, you know, um, they're paying me plenty to do what I do. I'm not motivated by how much money that I make anyway. Um you know, uh, and obviously Stephen A making a, making plenty. They gave McAfee. You had him last week. You got all the details. Seven years, but he got, how much did he get? You did the interview. Well, how that was I. Did, I didn't get into because Marsh. It was Marshan who reported five years, eighty five million, and McAfee said that wasn't true. And I don't. I'm not going to get on here and ask someone their salary because, like I said, I'm not that interested. Until you know, I mean, listen, Howard got you to reveal the first take thing. It was I know it's a big thing. I don't. I don't get wrapped up in the money. It's like, go do what you can. Get what you can. God bless you. Yeah. You know, people love to hear those figures. I think they're getting yes. a little immune to it, though. I agree with you. I yeah. think people are getting a little immune to it. And right now with ESPN, I guess they're going to get rid of some people now. I mean, there's some... They're oh. supposed to have layoffs. Another topic I hate discussing. They're supposed to have layoffs at the end and of I the know, month. And I know those are people yeah. who are going to know. So, I mean, that's yeah. why when they can... Uh, when somebody can fish out what McAfee's making, so Hunter, how's McAfee getting this? And we're cutting right. this, and right. this guy's making that, and, we'll cut, and that's where this comes in. So, right, that's true. Um, uh, but I, you know, I, I don't know enough about. Uh, I guess McAfee's going to control his own show. What was your t the thing that would worry me a little bit about McAfee's had a lot of jobs. Why did he leave FanDuel? What happened with that? The way explained it so south so quick. It was only on air for a year. The way he explained it to me, and I thought it made total sense, and I was I was kind of blown away by this. McAfee does everything himself, doesn't have an agent, doesn't have a publicist. He's And he told me he's booking his show himself. Right. It's a lot of work. Got to get the so, guests. He has a lot of the good guests too. Yep, go ahead. So what he's doing here is his show, this is what he says. His show is going to be the same. It's going to run the same way. ESPN is just going to handle the ad sales, the commercials, the money part of it. His show is still going to be, he said, he told me he can still have all the non ESPN guests on, he, you know, he has on like Ian Rappaport from NFL network. He said ESPN hasn't told him anything that they can't have any of that on. He's doing this to make his workload easier because right now he's literally doing every single thing for his show. He just had a kid a month ago. His first so now kid. he's going to have ESPN do a lot of the business aspect of it. Exactly. Well, and FanDuel wasn't doing that. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So well, FanDuel wasn't. Took some of the work, but took some well, of the no, it's also his show will grow, as you know, from being on first day. I brought you up. I this is exact. You know, it's funny. I use you as an example while I interviewed him because, and he said this too. He's going to go to ESPN and be on ESPN TV, and he's going to all these people who've never heard of him or seen him or watched him are going to be open to him now and see him now. FanDuel doesn't have a TV station. FanDuel has nothing. 
He's going on ESPN. Yeah, people are going first to see him. Yeah. So it's, you know, you, you've said it. I said, you've said many times, you know, you've been in radio for 30, 40 years, the fan, biggest show on the fan, Sirius XM every day. And when, when you got to first take, you saw the power of ESPN. And it's the power. It's the machinery. Look at the Bob Myers thing I did last week. I, I know. Yeah. I'm seeing all of a sudden I said on ESPN, the whole world wants to know. And right. It's very strange. You got to be careful because yeah, so that was, you can explode. So that's, that was Pat's thinking. Go to ESPN, get more eyeballs to his show, and let ESPN handle the business side of it, and he can just work on his show. And you make a good point. FanDuel doesn't have a TV outlet, so maybe it was a good move. Yeah. Right. Good point. Right. Um, how, so first take, everything's going swimmingly. Yeah, first take is, uh, I, you know, I, I can't – I remember it's a little harder now because Stephen A's not around a lot. You know, I remember he's on – Yeah, he's remote. always remote. He's on remote chips. I think the biggest thing about first take is me and J.J. Redick, a little kumbaya. You know, um, I think that I think if I had to give you a development since the last time we talked, what, about four or five months ago? No, it was October 20th, the last time. We spoke, I think, right before you went in the Hall of Fame. Right. Oh, that's right. It was before the Hall of Fame. That is what I would say. I would say is that the relationship between J.J. Reddick and myself is very good. I think he gets me a little better now. Um, you know, uh, I probably get that, you know, he's not as edgy maybe as maybe I once thought. And I think that uh, that has matured. I think that's the positive, I tell you, in the last five or six months. Stephen A and, and I are always going to be Stephen A and I. I mean, Stephen A and I have a good relationship, texts me a lot. You know, he looked up to me growing up as, you know, growing up as a high school kid. He looked up to me and Mike. I, 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 that has a lot to do with it. And I told you a thousand times, my job to go on there is to make his life a little easier. Like tomorrow, for instance, when I go on there or this next week or two at the NBA play, you know, he's going to be tired. He works midnight. You know, he's on the midnight. He's got to get up right. and crack at dawn if he's in Denver. So if I can go on there in two hours and I can help take a little of the load away and, you know, do the what I'm mad about, and scream and yell for 10 minutes and take some pressure off him, you know, that's basically in a lot of ways what I think my role is. And give him credit. He allows me to do it. But I think if I had to give you – the development since last October that we had chatted about, it would be the idea that, you know, I've always gotten along with everybody else on that. You know, JJ and I had some issues early. No problems with JJ Reddick, none whatsoever. I'm glad to hear that because I was always a JJ Reddick fan on that I, I, as a media person. Because I, what I like about people in media, and this is where you and Howard come in, I like people who are different. And I think JJ's a little different. Now, a lot of people are JJ's arrogant. JJ, okay, so that, you know, many people in sports media are arrogant. I mean, I think. What's happened is, and I can see it watching it. JJ's now he gets you. He gets you. Going to I, I, right. I think he gets me. Yeah. I think he understands yeah. me a little better. Uh, yeah. I think, and uh, you know, and he's not as. And once he understands me, then he doesn't get as edgy, right. because you know you don't want to be that edgy. And I think edgy. I think he's lost a little of that. Um, you know that line. Where he's loosened up a little bit. Yeah, that's it. I mean, if you yeah. go across that line, you get nasty. Then it becomes uncomfortable, and yeah. it hasn't been that way in a long time. And I give JJ credit for that. So that's the best thing I would say about that. But yeah, he was great. He was great. Up, he was great when you weren't there. You were in. Um, I was in uh, Vienna. Vienna, and he did your uh, what I'm mad about. And he did that what I'm mad about. I mean, he loved that what I'm mad about. But uh, yeah, I mean, I. Uh, you know, there was a no doubt about it to do uh, another year of it. It was not even a debate. I'm glad they wanted me back. That was a no brainer. Um, I talked to them all the time. I mean, you know, they, if I can't do the Wednesday, for instance, they always like, for instance, next week, I can't do Wednesday. I got a son graduating. They move me to Tuesday. You know, they make sure they get me on there once a week. Um, so I give them a lot of credit for that. And I think yeah. I supply a little juice for them on the day I'm on. I think that's what they're looking to do. All right, Russo's on. Yeah, help, care, help carry the show today. And that's so, whether I could do that every day, I probably couldn't. But once a week, right. I can, I, once a week, I can do that. I can do it. For As you. a fan of it, I love it once a week because it feels like an event. I don't want it every day. Once a yeah, week, right. it's an you event. Want an event. I like you want it. something to look forward yeah. to. You want something exactly. to look forward to. So you resigned for a, an extra year. One more year. Yeah, my contract right. was up, so I signed for the extra year. And they gave me, this, you know, basically the same amount of appearances. And, you know, I mean, you know, every Wednesday, yeah. you know, Chris, when you want to take off, take off. When you got to do something, you do something. And we'll make it up on the other end. So, I mean, I and if, anyway, I just went through the schedule with them a couple of days ago. You know, what days that Stephen A will be off? Can you do this day? If he's not here, can you do that day? How about next Thanksgiving? Can you come on? I, get, I did last Thanksgiving. Can you give us an hour? Yeah, I'll do it. Whatever you need me to do. My job is, uh, Jimmy, this is not going to last forever, okay? Uh, if, uh, listen, people you never are going to get sick of Christopher Russo eventually. So I, I, I should capitalize on the notoriety as long as I can. That's what it comes down to. 
Do you want to tell us your salary like you told Howard? No, I can't do that. I can't. You got in trouble. Right. I told you. I, got, I know. You told me they said not helpful. Not helpful. Um, 